We're so excited today to have Kathy Smith Curry, Director of the Office of, Prevent of uh, Reentry Services at the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice, and Jamicia, is it Jamicia or Jamica? Jamicia? Okay, thank you. Uh, Phillips, who is the Employment Resource Coordinator, and they're going to discuss a program they have called FRESH. Let me go forward a little bit, if I may. Okay, we need to have a special thank you to our anchors. Uh, we cannot do this without our anchors, and we're very appreciative of all of their support. Max, as you know, is here to provide um, information and just kind of to coordinate partnerships between workforce providers and um, people who provide services to WorkSource um, across the metro area. Upcoming with Max, we have the Max Academy on trauma-informed customer care. This one's in person. It is on Tuesday, June 28th, next Tuesday from 10 to 3. It's at the Goodwill on Lawrenceville Highway. And you can see your email probably to register for that or see Joy with Max or email Joy with Max. Max Talks with McKinney's on the skilled trades is also in person. It's Wednesday, July 6th from at 11.30 to 1.30. And the next Max Minutes with it will be with Accenture Skills to Succeed Academy on Friday, July 8th at 9 a.m. They want to um, talk to us about some of their uh, new initiatives that they have. So we, are, we have sent out an email for a community impact survey where you can please share how your organization is making a difference. As you can see, it will help us better understand how, how you are connecting with job seekers and how your services are assisting people to make a difference. And we can learn about how the work that we're all doing. So if you've seen that in email, please um, fill that out and get that back in. It will be very helpful to all of us. So I did a, a quick overview, but again, we're so excited to have um, Kathy Smith Curry and Jamicia Phillips with us. Um, Kathy, if you want to start sharing your screen, that would be great. And then afterwards, I'll have a couple of um, questions if we have time. And please, uh, everyone who's attending, please put in your um, questions in the chat as well, and I'll be looking at that. Are you ready, Kathy? I think you're on mute. There we go. We are ready. Wonderful, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, we're <laughs> delighted to be here. And Jamicia is going to start us off. So Jamicia, the floor is yours. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, everyone. Um, again, as Ms. Um, Hunter has already provided an uh, introduction. Um, again, my name is Jamicia Phillips and I serve as the Employment Resource Coordinator with the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice within the Office of Reentry Services. And um, our director, who is Ms. Kathy Smith-Curry, uh, we are grateful and we are delighted for the invitation to present to you all on today. And we're gonna share details of the awesome initiative, which we refer to as the Fresh Start Youth Initiative. We would also like to thank our commissioner, Commissioner Tyrone Oliver, for his support of this initiative. So to begin, I would like to provide a little detail on how this initiative began. Um, Fresh Start, which stands for Focusing Resources Effectively to Sustain Hope. This initiative began about two and a half years ago with a conversation between one of our task force members who introduced the department to well-known Atlanta entrepreneur and restaurateur, Ms. Pinky Cole who is the owner of Slutty B. And from that particular meeting, sparked the attention of several different business owners in and around the state. And at that time, our partnerships began to grow and it continues to grow daily. And we will get into a list of those partnerships later within our presentation. Fresh Start Youth Initiative provides opportunities to our youth that they never would have thought possible. And here is a slide which provides some additional detail of the Fresh Start Youth Initiative. The Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice 
Fresh Start Youth Initiative provides DJJ youth with career opportunities by partnering with local business owners. The initiative is a program in the department's Office of Reentry Services that, facilitate, that facilitates youth connections to services and support as they plan to transition back into their community. And as I stated, here is a list of our Fresh Start partners. Um, this is our current list as of today. And as I stated, the list continues to grow. Um, we have Kubota, again, Slutty Vegan, um, Tempest X, Fulton County Magistrate Court, Nouveau Bar and Grill, Extra Clean Hand Car Wash, Wise Auto Brokers, Sage Automotive Interiors, MWL Incorporated. We have the Home Depot Path to Pro program. Um, Captain D's, which is a statewide initiative, um, they're located all around the state. Um, Inspire Brands, which is statewide, and under that brand falls Arby's, Sonic, Jimmy John's, Dunkin' Donuts, Buffalo Wild Wings, and also Baskin Robbins. We also have NIFCO, KTW, ASI, Tracte, Maple Ridge Cabinetry, WorkSource Georgia, Goodwill of North Georgia, Loaded Potato and Loaded Nacho, Ascendant, and also First Step Staff. Most of the um, partners that I just read off to you are centrally located in the Metro Atlanta area, with the exception of um, those companies like um, NIFCO, Tracte, and MWL, they're in the Stevens County area and also concentrated in Hall County. Next slide, please. And here's just a bit of statistical information as it relates to our youth employment and their, okay, <laughs> them being connected to employment. In 2021, DJJ, DJJ identified 83 youth release do we go ahead of ourselves? Okay. Keep switching back. You're good. Okay. We identify 83 youth which were released from our facilities that had an identified need for employment. And within two months of their release from detention, 48% or 40 of the 83 youth obtain employment through our Fresh Start partnership. So we have learned uh, through surveying our youth that they have preferences. And um, we were able to obtain from the youth their top career choices. And those are in the areas of welding, truck driving, uh, carpentry and construction, engineering technology, uh, many expressed interest in joining the military, and more recently, logistics and supply chain management. I'd like to talk a little bit about why it's a good idea to partner with the Department of Juvenile Justice uh, with our Fresh Start Youth Initiative. We are all concerned about public safety and when individuals are employed, they're less likely to commit crimes to support themselves. So partnering with us and providing employment opportunities for our youth will help to reduce recidivism statewide. As an employer or an organization, you're able to actually give back and contribute to the next generation of skilled workers. Additionally, um, expanding an opportunity to youth and or returning citizens promotes an organizational culture of investing in youth and also in the community. Uh, additionally, it helps to improve organizational retention which is critical to any organization. And with all of us working collaboratively and um, making employment opportunities available to all citizens in the state will contribute to making Georgia the best state in the nation. So we often have many employers that uh, 
contact us and are expressing interest in, interest in becoming a Fresh Start partner or second chance employer, and they ask the question, how do you go about partnering with us? Well, we'll talk about this a little bit later on, but you know, work is a learned behavior. We often say that on our team. And so it may require a little extra effort in partnering with this, this uh, population and offering employment opportunities to youth in this, in this particular area. So we ask that you provide a safe and supportive work environment. And what does that look like? That looks like offering job training for um, incoming employees, also uh, coaching and perhaps on the job, uh, mentoring job coaches. We've established that work is a learned behavior. And many of our youth have not experienced work in the past in the traditional sense. So um, an on-site job coach is most helpful when a youth is entering um, an employment relationship. And then finally, I'd be willing to contact the Office of Reentry Services. We're happy to walk any potential employers through the process of becoming a Fresh Start partner. It's a wonderful opportunity, as I mentioned, to give back to the community and to offer employment opportunities for youth. I was in a meeting recently and someone shared, you know, individuals who uh, have a 750 uh, credit score and uh, a college degree those are not the individuals that are out committing crimes. So we want to set our youth up for success by offering these opportunities through education, job opportunities, job training, career readiness training, uh, to strengthen their employability skills and prepare them for success in the job market. We have listed our contact information here um, so that if you have an interest in joining uh, the Fresh Start Youth Initiative. Uh, you may contact either of us at the information provided, or there's information available on the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice website at djj.georgia.gov. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you, you very much. This is, this is very interesting. I've, I had one of the things that has come up is that um, we don't realize that uh, DJJ is Georgia's 181st school district. Can you tell us about that and kind of the importance of that and how that works? Absolutely, I would be delighted to. Uh, the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice, as you mentioned, is the 181st school district in the state of Georgia. We are a traditional school, slightly different from a school in the community, but by the same token, we are a full-fledged school system. We offer middle school courses, uh, high school courses. Our youth are able to obtain their high school diploma. Uh, youth are also able to even start college with us. We have partnerships with the Technical College System of Georgia and offer many certifications, certification programs through TCSG. So um, there are a number of programs and opportunities for youth through Georgia Preparatory Academy, our school system. And it's located on each campus um, at each of our facilities across the state. How many facilities do you have across the state? There are 26 facilities. 26, that's fantastic. I had no idea. Um, can you talk about there are a couple of, I think, a couple of angles that we wanted to approach, but from the beginning, what are the most common reasons that you see youth becoming involved in, in the justice system? You know, it really varies and it varies geographically, uh, but some of the most common reasons I would say are a lack of resources and services and supports in their respective communities. Um, it also could uh, be poor performance in school, uh, lack of parental supervision. There are also mental health reasons and substance use issues. And believe it or not, even a lack of nutrition can contribute mm -hmm. uh, to youth becoming involved in the juvenile uh, justice system because poor nutrition impacts uh, behavior. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It all it all works. It does. It? It, it all impacts everything. It does. So how are you um, how are you partnering with employers? 
Demetria, you mentioned, you showed us some of the employers. How do you engage with employers with this program? And that's directed to either one of you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank well, you. I'll start us off. Um, we start by learning about the organization itself and learning about what their mission and vision um, and what their goals are and what they're looking for in an employee. Uh, then we provide a briefing uh, for them on the Fresh Start Youth Initiative. And we talk about opportunities to partner based on that company or organization's employment needs. And that's really how we start. And we also discuss with them, as I mentioned previously, uh, other considerations of becoming a Fresh Start partner. Are you able and willing to provide that supportive environment and perhaps assign a job mentor or a job coach to ensure a successful relationship on both sides? Wonderful, wonderful. Um, someone in the chat says, uh, Beth Jones, thank you, Beth. Does anyone from the area technical college come and talk with the youth about opportunities for training that are available? And do you, did you know there's a mobile welding lab that can come to the DJJ and demonstrate the trade? Absolutely. And thank you for mentioning that because we have a mobile welding lab in the works. Uh, that will be coming online at two of our facilities. So yes, we do have uh, partners come in. We've worked with Mercer University, Georgia Southern, Kennesaw State, uh, Georgia State University. As I've mentioned, we've had, we do currently have students enrolled in college um, through our school system. Um, we are offering a number of uh, technical certifications, uh, general automotive technology at uh, our Eastman facility, uh, barbering at two of our facilities, business management and administration at our long-term facilities and two of our regional youth detention centers. We offer a cosmetology program, culinary arts, uh, horticulture at two facilities, law, public safety and security certifications, SeaTech uh, and so forth and so on. And as I mentioned, the mobile welding lab will be coming online soon. Uh, we currently work with Columbus Tech, Augusta Tech, Central Georgia Tech, Oconee Fall Line, and Atlanta Tech, uh, just to name a few. Wonderful, wonderful. How are you, speaking of such things, how are you partnering with some of our workforce providers? So we do have a relationship as we discussed with the Technical College System of Georgia. Uh, we work very closely with Goodwill Industries, uh, particularly Goodwill of North Georgia. We have worked closely with the Georgia Department of Labor um, and we have worked with many other private partners on job readiness skills, career development, um, career readiness. Uh, we have a partnership with the Home Depot and uh, Home Depot comes into our facilities and they offer a career readiness curriculum for our youth. So we have uh, employment partnerships across the board and also um, partnerships with workforce partners to prepare our kids, our youth to be successful once they enter um, the work world. So it sounds like it's a, a big collaboration and we're, we're all happy to be a part of it if we are and very interested in, in joining you. Um, one of the, let's see, Venus Cobb asked, are you able to partner with the local workforce boards and their on the job training programs? Is that one of the things that you're doing now? We are certainly willing to, and we have made an appeal to some of the local workforce boards, and we have had some success with those local workforce boards, but we're always willing to partner with any of our workforce partners here in the state. Um, we understand and realize that uh, preparation is the key to success. So um, anytime we can offer employability skills for our youth to prepare them for employment, we realize that that is very valuable. Again, and I can't say this enough, work is a learned behavior, and all of us have not been privy to that opportunity prior to entering um, an employment relationship. And Kathy, that's something that, um, that was an interesting statement that you said earlier, that work is a learned behavior. Um, could you speak to that a little bit more? Because 
what I'm imagining is just as there's sometimes not a lot of support at home, the parents are out struggling, trying to make a living and dealing with some of their own issues. Yes. If um, the students don't see that behavior modeled for them, then they don't have an idea about what that might mean to go to work or what's involved. I'm sorry, could you speak a little bit more about that? Well, absolutely. And I think you hit the nail on the head, so to speak. If you've not seen that behavior modeled, then you're not aware of what's required. And uh, just little simple things, like if you're running late, that you need to contact someone and let them know. If you're having difficulty uh, getting along with a coworker, how do you resolve that amicably? And how do you continue to um, be successful in the environment when um, you don't have those skills? And so it is a learned behavior. And that's part of why, you know, employment uh, uh, skills and work readiness skills are so essential to success. Um, many of our youth have not seen that behavior modeled as we've established. And so um, we do everything that we can on the front end to prepare them with career readiness skills, mock interviews and things of that nature. Uh, we're doing something really um, innovative with Goodwill Industries and in using the Oculus headsets for virtual interviews to give them an opportunity to experience that. But, um, and we do other, you know, in-person mock interviews and things of that nature to uh, make them comfortable and prepare them and talk to them about various scenarios that could possibly occur at work and how to handle those. Wonderful. And I would imagine that there's also some communication with the employers and the providers about um, assisting the youth in, um, in some training, meaning as something comes up, you know, stopping in the moment and sharing with them about how, how to do something, how they might approach something. Mm -hmm. So it's, it, you can learn something in a, in a workshop, but if you're in the moment of a customer interaction or maybe a skill they don't know of, or as you said, a conflict with a coworker, if someone hasn't told them, okay, stop, let's talk, let's talk about this and the best way to approach this. Um, and that takes time and effort. And so an employer has to be willing to put that effort in, but the, I would imagine that the benefits would far outweigh the time spent. Absolutely, and that's the beauty of having a job coach on site or wow. a job mentor to support um, the youth as they're entering that organization. Because you're right, a workshop or a seminar or guided practice in a facility uh, may not fully prepare them for that actual live encounter uh, in the, in, on the job. And so we want to make sure that the environment is supportive and that there is someone to further guide them through some of these um, inevitable bumps in the road, so to speak. Mm -hmm. One of the other questions um, from Ms. Cadet is, are these services for youth in custody or within the community when they are out of custody? Both. Both, okay, wonderful. Both. That's wonderful. You know, it's our goal to get the youth connected to employment, um, provided they're age appropriate and employable um, as soon as possible, because we know that there's a very short window of opportunity there. Uh, there are other things that await the youth as they're returning home, old friends, old playgrounds, things of that nature. And our youth receive um, a good bit of treatment and programming when they're with us. And we want to keep those positive behaviors uh, going. And so if we can connect them to employment really before they're released, uh, we have spoken to many employers who are willing to um, allow them to complete an application prior to their release and perhaps have a virtual interview. That's the best case scenario because the youth is able to go to work uh, relatively quickly when they're released. But we do have opportunities for youth who are also in the community. Our partners are growing and we're so excited about uh, the opportunities uh, that our youth have for employment now. And I have to say that not all of these uh, opportunities are entry level. Uh, many are, but there are 
potential career opportunities. Many of our employers want to uh, bring our youth in and onboard them and have them grow with their companies and organizations. And that's exciting. Um, and many of them don't start at you know, a minimum wage. A lot of these companies are paying much higher wages and they offer incentives like uh, tuition reimbursement and things of that nature paid life insurance. And that's really exciting because these are things that our youth really need. And um, we want them to think long-term. Yeah, what like ages? I'm sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, 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 go ahead. What age range are we talking about here for the youth? Well, it varies because we have some partners who are willing to, um, with the appropriate, um, you know, policies and practices in place. Uh, some youth can start as young as 14 and 15 years of age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then what's your, your, would you say your oldest participant typically is? Well, youth are with us inside of our facilities up until the age of 21, if that's what's designated um, with their particular case. But if a youth is in community, um, it doesn't matter. We're happy to help them at any age. That's wonderful. Mm -hmm. One of my sisters was a county director for DFACS and in talking with her about some family um, struggles and challenges, she, she has often said, you know, there are two things that um, youth and children need and that is keep them busy and keep them supervised. <laughs> and we recognize that that's not always easy as, as you're a parent, especially if you're having to work you know, two or three jobs or maybe an overnight shift and um, maybe you're a single parent or you're juggling shifts with your partner, that may not be easy. Do you provide some workshops for um, the parents of the children? I'm sure that you do in, in addressing some of the challenges that they will face. We absolutely do. Family engagement is a huge part of our a framework with the Office of Reentry Services and, and the Georgia Department of Juvenile Justice. We offer a family cafe for our parents and it assists the parents in uh, building positive relationships and improving communications with their youth. We also have what we call a monthly family chat and that occurs the first Monday of every month. It's an hour and a half session where we offer training and guidance for parents. Parents can suggest the topics that they want to discuss. Uh, right now, we are in the midst of a three-part uh, that's occurring over the summer months, financial literacy workshop for our parents. So Wonderful. we want to equip the families with all of the skills and supports um, that are needed to be successful. Um, and we really embrace the family as a whole. Wonderful. So there are a number of family engagement initiatives that uh, support uh, the family. Great. Another um, question from Ronnie Weiss is, how much does career exploration figure in? They are a nonprofit that tries to get folks to know about opportunities in the travel industry which has a lot of different sectors and roles that people just aren't aware of. Is this something you'd be um, willing to explore? Absolutely, absolutely. And that is one of the things, of course, we offer um, you know, interest profilers and things of that nature, but in all honesty, there are many opportunities that our youth simply have not, are not aware of because they've not been exposed. Uh, to the and, the and educated about some of these opportunities. So we would love that. We welcome that uh, opportunity. Wonderful, wonderful. Uh, Faye has another question and that is, does um, DJJ partner with GDOL to utilize a federal bonding program that provides support to employers? Yes, we do. Okay, good. <laughs> All right, that's wonderful, that's wonderful. Okay, and then we have another question. Are these youth in a controlled environment on probation or both? Both. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you know, I mentioned, uh, we have had youth contact us who have been um, out in the community, no longer on co uh, community supervision, and they contact us and they have a need or they're interested in employment and we're happy to help them. Uh, once, you know, 
connected with us. We're here to support and assist in any way. We have uh, another um, question. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read through the chat and make sure we don't miss any questions. It's we appreciate okay. everyone's um, activity and interaction in the chat group and please feel free to continue to ask any questions. Uh, but Ms. Jones, thank you. She said, what will show up on a background check for these youth and is this a problem for the employers? How do you overcome some of these obstacles with the employers? Um, our kids' records are sealed. And so we, you know, when we engage in partnerships with um, Fresh Start Partners, they're aware of the background. We don't go into any specifics about um, a youth's particular situation because that's not relevant. And right. um, we feel very confident that when a youth is released into the community, um, they are deserving of an opportunity to operate in our in society and in the community as any other individual. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. And it's wonderful that they have such advocacy with, with you and all the other partners. This really gives them a, a chance to make a fresh start. And that's, that's what's needed. Um, it's do all you, about. <laughs> do you offer any opportunities within the green economic space? Do you have any employers that are working within that area? Jamesia, did, we did have one employer did we not in the green economic space? I can't think of the name right now. Or maybe it was a, an actual program opportunity. Ah, uh, like a training opportunity program? I think so, yes. Yeah, it was um, Gangsters to Growers. That's oh. it. Yeah, where they were teaching um, the youth how to grow their own food. Oh, wonderful. Uh, yeah. So that was sort of like a intern program where they would train them and then, then they were able to create a product and then sell those items as well. Um, and then they also extended um, some educational opportunities through that program also. So, yeah. Wonderful. Um, a couple of other um, comments have been, can you share some success stories that you've had? That maybe some challenges and then some ways you overcame those, help them to to overcome them and then success stories. We would love to hear. <laughs> I'm just noticing a comment in the chat and uh, thank you. We think that's a wonderful program and we would love to get, get that going again because that's the Gangsters to Growers program. But yeah. uh, absolutely, um, you know, we've all been through that adolescent period where we've had challenges. And so we work with our kids to help them overcome some of those barriers and challenges. Uh, we've had some wonderful success stories. Uh, one of the most uh, special stories and one of my favorites is to actually see kids start or one of our kids start a job and then advance to a frontline manager position. So we've had a couple of uh, situations such as that. And that is very rewarding to see them grow in that way. What are, if you can recall, what are some of the things that the students or the parents have said, um, maybe some paradigm shifts that they've said or some, some, some moments of a new self-awareness maybe that they have, have encountered that, that you could share? One of the things that we've learned from parents whose youth have participated in the Fresh Start Youth Initiative is just the growth, the level of maturity, uh, the level of responsibility that's increased, um, their sense of achievement and their confidence. Mm -hmm. That's wonderful. Jamesia, what do some employers say as they're working with the youth? What is their feedback? Some of them will tell us that the youth that we refer to them from our system are model employees. So they're, you know, exceptional. So those are some of the feedback that we have received. And um, as a Department of Labor employee, that's the, some of the feedback that we get um, from employers with our top step program as well for reentry for adults is that um, these are people that 
you know, the loyalty, the level of loyalty and the, um, how hard they work and how concerned they are with doing a good job is um, often greater than it is with the, you know, the rest of the, the population. I did see in some of your um, presentation, uh, Jamisia, where you were talking about the percentage rate of, of employment that you had, which I believe was 40%, is that right? With your youth, and I, I think that's a great percentage. I think um, you should be encouraged by that because in talking with you this morning about some of the challenges um, to, to get them to work, I mean, not only do you have to have the employers, but they have to have the, um, the supportive services around that and they have to be willing to do it. I mean, that's the, the first thing, you know, too. So I would congratulate you and I know we all congratulate you on the hard work that you're doing in this, in this area. What are some of the um, reasons for recidivism that you have seen um, within the youth? I, th I think we've touched on some of this, but I'd just like to see that so that some of our partners can think about how we can, um, in some of our youth programs, how we can reach out to maybe overcome some of this challenge to prevent some of them from re-entering the system. Um, I think it goes back to what um, Director Kathy Smith Curry stated, the lack of services. Um, I think when they don't have the options or if they feel that, you know, no one's there to support them, um, I think that that can kind of cause some of those issues. Um, like I stated also about, you know, these opportunities providing um, things that these kids may never have thought were possible. Um, you wouldn't believe that, you know, when we present some of the partnerships to them, they're like, well, I've never heard of that. No one ever, you know, exposed them to certain things. So I think the lack of resources and support is a main factor in that. Yeah, and, and awareness. Right. And then access to those supportive services. I mean, exactly. even if they're around, something as, as simple but challenging as transportation, you know, exactly. to, to exactly. get to. Right. Okay. okay. Well, and transportation remains to be somewhat of a barrier, particularly for our youth in the southernmost and the northernmost areas of the mm -hmm. state where there's not a transit system to um, assist them in that way. But interestingly, and I'd like to share this, um, we have had some employers that have entertained the thought of some sort of rideshare program in helping to overcome those transportation barriers. So that's most helpful. Oh, that's wonderful. That is wonderful. And, and you know, I would imagine that just providing the services for um, to provide stability for them as they as they get back home, you know, as as they go back into the community. Has there been any work done uh, for youth or adults in in bringing them back into the community in such a way that they're not in the same situation? I know if they're youth, they're probably they're going back to their parents sometimes, most times, um, or they're they're going into another situation. Um, and for, for adults, you know, do you know of any program where there, there has been, we know that going back into where they were, the situation they were, the playground, as you, as you said, you know, that is a challenge. And the people that they have known before, that's a challenge. Has there been any, any programmatic work done to provide people access to a, a different um, area so they can start afresh? It is absolutely in the works. And I have to tell you, um, this is something that Commissioner Oliver is keenly focused on. And that's a part of having a fresh start. Um, we have had youth tell us, you know, I really don't want to go back there because I know what awaits me and there's trouble there. I'd like to have a, a new home and a new beginning. And so those are things that we're working on. We certainly have the partnerships uh, to support them. Those partnerships in the Northeast quadrant of the state in the Stevens County, Hall County mm -hmm. uh, areas, um, those positions are um, starting youth with a very solid uh, hourly wage and they're able to um, 
pay for housing in those areas with the wages that they're earning there. So that's an opportunity for them. We're also constantly cultivating uh, partnerships with uh, providers that uh, offer independent living situations. And so as those are growing and expanding, um, there are opportunities there for our youth to uh, move to a different location and gain employment and really begin that uh, transition process as an adult living independently. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's wonderful. And it's great that, that this thought and this depth of wraparound um, services is available. And I would imagine, you know, in some of the resources as, as they go back in or as they're in um, the system as well, is, is the challenge of there's the activity of getting back into something. There's the learned activity of that. But there's also how do they deal with, um, and there's the, the mental aspect, and there's certainly mental illness, but I'm just speaking of the mental aspect of being ready for that. And I'm sure there's a lot of um, anxiousness and fear, you know, and some anger. There's a lot going on there about them getting back into the system. Um, Faye Vinson, to this end, asks the question, do you have mentorship programs for the youth after release? I was just about to bring mentoring up. Uh, we have a mentoring initiative. It's called the Georgia Youth Mentoring Initiative. And we also, uh, under the umbrella of, of GEM, our Georgia Youth Mentoring Initiative, we have various uh, mentoring opportunities, one of which, which has been so very impactful, is the partnership with the U.S. Attorney's Office in the Northern District of Georgia, and it's called Project Safe Neighborhoods. Many of you may have heard of it, uh, where the youth are working with what we call credible messengers who may have had a shared life or similar life experience, and they're able to build a relationship with the youth because they've been where the youth are now and they can speak to those current experiences mm -hmm. and sometimes youth are a little bit more prone to listen to someone who's walked that same path right. and so we partner with the U.S. Attorney's Office. We partner with faith-based organizations. Um, we have even uh, entered into a relationship with Georgia Power. They have an employee mentoring program, and so their employees sign up to become mentors. So we have a pretty robust mentoring initiative, and mentoring is key. There are some specific statistics um, related to mentoring, and we place a great deal of value on that according to the National Mentoring Partnership. Um, mentored youth are 46% less likely to get involved in substance use, and they're 59% more likely to get uh, better grades and 73% more likely to achieve their goals in life. So mentoring is an, an area that we focus very strongly on and understand the value of building those relationships with pro-social um, adults who are willing to mentor our youth. Someone is listening to them, someone is caring for them, and someone cares about them. Yes. You know, those, and those are some of the issues that often drives them into some of the behaviors that got them into trouble in, in the first place, you know. Um, do you have bilingual staff to work with people with language barriers? We do. Sure you do. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Well, everybody has had such great questions today. Is there any, is there any stone left unturned that, that we want to talk about? I want to make sure that everyone has the full, the full scope and depth of the services that you provide and the ways that we might be able to partner with you. Is there anything else that, Jamesia, you would like to say or request of your partners? And Ms. Um, Kathy, is you as well. Well, I would just like to say again, thank you all for the invitation for us to present on today. And we're also, um, I'm sorry, we always welcome additional partners. So if anyone is interested in partnering with us as far as employment opportunities, mentorship, we welcome you. Wonderful. Absolutely. And there's one partnership that I failed to mention that I'd like to just touch on uh, just briefly. And it's with Home Depot. It's called the Path to Pro Initiative. Oh. And um, so our youth are actually going to be during the summer learning 
uh, about various trades and that's opening up a, a, another area for our kids. And I learned from some of our friends and partners over at the Home Depot that the average plumber is 56 years of age. And in 2031, there will be a tremendous number of uh, these folks retiring. And so we need to get people trained to uh, really forge that, that field and workforce. And so that's another area that uh, we're really trying to encourage our youth to learn about and become involved in and engaged in. And so there's a three-pronged strategy connected to this initiative, and it's learning all about the various trades because many simply don't know if we, as we've already established. And then going through basic training where you learn just general things like construction math and basic construction mm -hmm. principles, and then really fine tuning that particular area of interest and concentrating the skill development uh, in that particular area, and then becoming linked with a pro. And that program is throughout the state. So that's another opportunity. But as Jamesia mentioned, uh, we are very grateful to have had uh, this time with you today. And uh, we are certainly willing to partner with any of our workforce partners uh, throughout the state, any potential employment partners, give us a call. We'd love to set up a briefing with you and uh, tell you more about Fresh Start and look for opportunities to become Fresh Start partners. Thank you. Thank you both so much for the value that you bring to the state of Georgia and the services that you provide for our youth. This is really um, important and critical work that you do. So what you do matters and all our partners are very interested. I see several people saying they're gonna be contacting you. And so we're very excited about, about that connectivity. Thank you for being with us. Just wanted to highlight a couple of other things again, upcoming with Max, the Max Academy on Trauma-Informed Customer Care on Tuesday, June 28th. Max talks with McKinney's on the skilled trade, speaking of construction, um, on Wednesday, July 6th. And Max Minutes again with Accenture Skills to Succeed Academy on Friday, July 28th. In July, we'll actually have two Max Minutes. So we're excited about that. And again, we want to thank our anchor investors um, for being with us and for helping us. We can't do it. We can't do this partnership without our anchor investors and the many people that, that work in Max and Joy uh, Wilkins, who keeps us going, and uh, Miss Daniela Perry, who, who has, will be coming back. We're very excited about having her and her expertise and uh, professionalism with us again. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Jamesia and Kathy, for all that you do and for being with us today. We appreciate your time. And thank you very much for all the attendees. Thank you for spending some time with us um, today. And yes, Joy will be sending out the presentation to all of those. She says, yes, we'll be sure to get the slides out. Thank you all. Have a great weekend and a great Friday. It was wonderful being with you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.